Hi everyone, Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com coming at you with 2022 Topps Series 1 Baseball. Six box jumbo edition, random team break number four. Uh, this is where uh, uh, you, one spot gets you three teams. And all card chips, so a lot of nice stuff here. Big thanks to this group for making it happen. I, I grabbed the right list, right? That's the right list. For three random teams each, yes, okay. So thanks everybody here for getting in on the action. Let's triple your names up, there's one. There's two, and there's three. And all teams are in. Let's roll it, randomize. Names and teams, three and a four, seven times. One, two, three, four, five, six, and once more, seventh and final time. We got Curtis, down to, down to Danny. Thanks, guys. Three and a four, seven times for the teams. Good luck. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seventh and final time. We got Blue Jays down to the Seattle Mariners after seven. All right, Curtis, you got the Toronto Blue Jays, Danny with the Pirates, Harry with the Mets, Danny with the Royals, Dusty with the White Sox, Matthew with the Twins, Curtis with the A's, uh, other Curtis with a K with the Arizona Diamondbacks, Matthew with the Tigers, Chris with the Braves, Craig with the Red Sox, Harry with the Padres and Cubs, Curtis with a K, Colorado Rockies, Craig with the Cardinals, Dusty with the Giants, Patrick with the Yankees, Curtis with the C, Brewers, Danny with the Nats, Matthew with the Guardians, uh, Craig with Houston, Curtis with the K, Orioles, Patrick with the Rays, with Last Spot Mojo as well, Danny with the Angels, Chris with the Dodgers, Dusty with the Marlins, Chris with the Phillies, Patrick with the Reds, Danny with the Rangers and Seattle Mariners. Let's sort by alphabetically by team. And we're gonna pause the video uh, when we come back We'll see if there's any trades, and then we'll have this big jumbo case right here. Thanks, everybody. Uh, we will be right back. All right, welcome back, everybody. There was some trade chatter, but in the end, no deals were done here in break four, where one spot gets you three random teams here on Wednesday the 16th. Hump day. Thanks for hanging out with us. Thanks for getting into the action, appreciate it. And good luck. As you know by now, if you're watching the Rip Party yesterday, Top Series 1 Rip Party, one autograph and two relic cards per box on average. And we've got those oversized ones and silver packs. No, these are not the Sausage Link packs, Curtis. These are just normal jumbo packs. I think it's... And the Bowman ones where you see the sausage link packs and the super jumbos. There's the oversized Tristan McKenzie. So you, we're seeing for the first time the Guardians logos on products. All right, and good luck. Yeah, they're, they're pretty jumbo. Now we did we did uh, 
between me and Jason, we did nine cases last night. And um, on average, there seems to be about one Wander Franco rookie card per box. If you're keeping track of those kind of things. A lot of the redemption seem to be for the 1987 autographs, and those are on card. Uh, what else did we notice? I think that's about it. And whatever autographs we've pulled, we've seen some. Uh, we've seen some old school autographs that were really nice. There's some medallion cards that are really nice. The train whistle is not busy. And products like this, the out of fives and one of ones are uh, are pretty few and far between. Which makes them that much more special if we are able to pull one of those. How many numbered cards per box? I think that fell around one or two per box. I feel like we'll usually see a, uh, a 2020 or a 2022 out of 2022 numbered card and then maybe one other. I guess we'll find out. I mean, obviously it's gonna vary from case to case, but we'll see what this case looks like. And the short prints are turned around like this Hank Aaron short print, nice. So those you can identify by the digit, and I know it's kind of tiny right here, but that ends in six zero, which indicates the short print. That short printed Hank Aaron goes to Chris Parent and the Braves. And all cards ship, so we'll breeze through this a little bit more quickly just in the interest of time. Yeah, they're not. That answered your question, right? Yeah, thankfully they're not, Curtis. In previous years, they were. Gold, gold borders not numbered. Ooh, Justin and Teddy pulled a nice wander out of 99 on Instagram earlier today. Nice. Yeah, while we're doing this break, Jason Jaspi on Instagram, so. And we got a Hanser Alberto, 64 out of 2022 for the Royals. That'll be for Danny. And just in the interest of time, we're just going to sleeve those up and set those aside. Our shipping team will take care of the top loading. If you're in a random box break, those will generally ship out a little bit faster because there's really no sorting involved. So just keep that in mind. For these multiplayer cards, there's enough of these in an entire case we can probably evenly distribute, you know, some of these to the Royals, some of these to the White Sox, some of these to the Blue Jays. So that's what we're going to do with these. Same with, same with this set right here. There'll be enough of them where they'll be evenly, or as close to even as possible, evenly distributed. Now, if, we're, if they're numbered, if this, there ends up being a numbered card, and usually that'll be flipped around, right? Then we'll, uh, then we'll randomize. Just a couple little house rules for this particular, for this particular break. Um, I, I have filed, although I mean, I don't know. I've not filed yet, but my, my tax documents are with my uh, tax person. Jason's sister, actually. I, I did not check the please audit me box. Curtis, I did watch Book of uh, Boba Fett. What did you think? I mean, really just ended up being, there's Wanda Franco right here. So the the... In most cases, the pattern has been Corbin Burns, then Wander Franco, then Yelich after that. So the first Wander Franco poppin' is for Patrick Davis, last spot mojo. And this year, um, in 2022 Series 1, 
Wander Franco will be the only uh, the rookie that will be pulling, sleeving, and top loading immediately. A chain that varies from year to year. As for Book of Boba Fett, I I enjoyed the I I enjoyed living in that I I enjoy living in the Star Wars universe for an hour a week. I'm fine with that. Um, but I don't know if we really needed it. Average Curtis is saying the Boba stuff was pretty lame. Mando stuff was good. Yeah, it just seemed like they just had a lot of loose. Ooh, this is cool. Tampa Bay Pride Wander Franco. Nice start for Patrick. Sometimes these are numbered on the back. This one's not. But yeah, I don't know if they really needed to do that show. I guess it ended up just being The Mandalorian 2.5, a seven episode trailer for Mandalorian 3, which is really, or just a very long subplot. I just feel like they just had a lot of like, like sort of unfinished or half-baked storylines. It was kind of like junior varsity team. I feel like it was just JV team where they were just kind of trying out ideas. So, oh, that's a relic right there. JT Real Muto to 199. So that's kind of what it felt like. Just, I watched it, you know, but, but I think that's hopefully kind of taking a step back in those shows, <laughs> you know, just, just means that Obi-Wan series is going to be great. Mando is going to be even better. Yeah, the, the slow speed Vespa chase, is that what you're talking about? The slow speed chase wasn't wasn't super thrilling. Not sure if I was really into the 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 mods group. There are some individual moments that were kinda really nice in that show. And I guess they're really leaning into I guess they're really leaning into the Dave Filoni animated series Clone Wars kind of uh, kind of thing I guess they're really leaning into that and kind of live actioning that and filling in some of the some of the uh, missing t from the, some of the open time periods in, in Star Wars the form this year has a box that says did you buy or sell any crypto it's a joke in your office Chad saying <laughs> it's an audit me box wait and the, it just says check the box but they don't require you to like there's no other information you have to give. I feel like most, most like sort of mainstream online exchanges will give you like a 1099 that you would just file to avoid that nonsense. Yeah, when's that Obi-Wan series, Curtis? Soon-ish, right? Oh, and there's our auto. There's Otto Lopez, <laughs> an auto auto. Auto auto going to Curtis, Toronto Blue Jays. Just to check yes or no. Thankfully, I have not done my own taxes in, uh, oh, you know what, I, f I forgot. Here, first of all, let me show you the Casey Mize. I forgot the silver packs from the first box. Yeah, I hope they do High Republic stuff too. I've been hearing that that, that could be the next sort of trio of feature films. But now, I'm wondering if maybe I feel like maybe the, the series works a little bit better. There's Jazz Chisholm to 150. Some of these can be numbered. Some of these silver packs can be autographed as well. Jazz Chisholm going to Dusty in Miami.
Uh, that's, that's a good question for chat. I, I want to say yes, right? Trading coin for coin is taxable, are taxable events. Like I feel like High Republic stuff, Curtis, could be better as a series, whereas this Mando series, I feel like they could have just done like a quick little hour, hour and a half, or like one or like two two hour episodes or something like that, and we would have gotten all that we needed. <laughs> that would have been enough. Chad is uh, Chad is in that world, ladies and gentlemen. But obviously, we're just talking very casually in a chat room here. So, so consider your own financial planner, or advisor, or, or CPA to get all the full details. But that being said, Chad does think that it should be a taxable event. Oh, you think high budget, uh, high republic will need a high uh, high budget, a big budget? So maybe that does go the feature film route. That could work, I guess. Next box, next jumbo. Now, Curtis, did, were there some uh, some people from Game of Thrones attached to that Star Wars project? This High Republic would be thousands of years before the timeline of what we know as Star Wars. All right, Gavin Sheets to 2022. I'll go to Dusty and the White Sox. 141 out of two, 2022. So Andre Jackson made some nice spot starts for my Dodgers last year. And obviously we'll do a little, we'll do a autograph and relic recap at the end. Oh, I see. So they're not attached to the, the Star Wars project anymore. Got it. And Mike Piazza die cut. That's a Mets edition. And we got the Nets on in the background. Nets at New York. And the Knicks are cruising. They're up 56-33. So Curtis, what are we what, what are we supposed to get this year? There's Randy Johnson, 227 out of 299. We got Obi-Wan in May, I want to say, late May, the Obi-Wan series. Is the Cassian Andor series going to happen this year? And the I think Ahsoka series maybe 2023. I think we may get Obi-Wan and then Cassian Andor series. And then late in the year, around World Cup time, maybe we'll get Mando 3. And then Ahsoka Tano in the spring. I think that's the idea maybe?
What's what's the acolyte? Or was that an autocorrect from Ahsoka? Ooh, maybe I, you know what? I gotta start. I gotta start that Bad Batch over. I started watching it, and it was good. I liked it, but then I got distracted by something, and then uh, gotta start rewatching it. There's Xander Bogarts, Red Sox. I love these City Patch cards here. They're manufactured, but they still look nice. Craig with the Red Sox. <laughs> yeah, she she burned some bridges there. And we got a piece of Frank Thomas's lumber. And that old 1987 design, that's for Dusty and the White Sox. the Juan Franco because we saw the Corbin Burns and then Roberto Clemente oh a dark side okay interesting well, I'll watch it take my money Disney Plus Top Series 1, Jumbo, six box, case break, number four, brought to you by Disney Plus. Start something today. I don't know if that's not the tagline, right? This Jaspies case breaks is brought to you by DraftKings. The guy on SportsCenter. The Jump, brought to you by DraftKings. Jaspie's Case Briggs, brought to you by Disney Plus. And there's our autograph, towards the end again. Nick Fortes, Miami Marlins. Uh, that's for Dusty. Dusty in Miami. If Dusty ever gets into a basketball break, I could maybe get to the Grizzlies. I could make some sort of a Dusty in Memphis thing. Where does yeah? Where does the Star Wars license go? When fanatics bought tops, did they buy? I think I. Well, I think I know everything sports related they have. There's Robin Yount to 150, 006 out of 150 for the Brew Crew. That'll be for Curtis. But I think they didn't buy the confectionaries, the confection, confectionaries, the candy. So what do they do with Star Wars? Yeah, I. But Topps Candy still exists. That's still so they're gonna con that's gonna continue on in some sort of capacity. So maybe it maybe that still falls under under you know sort of a side tops will still do Star Wars. They'll still have that license. I, that I don't know. I guess we'll find out once well, once everything's finalized. That'll Nate Pearson for you, Curtis, and the Blue Jays.
Yeah, right, because they, they've got, yeah, they've got GPK, too. I don't know, we'll see what happens. Yeah, d does does Fanatics have uh, like who has the tennis? I don't know if anyone has like the tennis license, right? Maybe there's a I don't know that I don't know how that works. So maybe someone should snag the WTA TA ATP. I think Upper Deck has a lot of the golf license. Oh, well, they got Tiger Woods. They do. They have a lot of the golf stuff. Here is Enrique Hernandez, Kike, 1987 out of 2022. It's a nice shot. Wish the Dodgers kind of kept him. Craig with Boston. Has anyone watched Bel Air? I have. Oh, so maybe Tops. Yeah, right. Because there was Tops. That's right. There was Transcendent Tennis. But is that like a one-off? Do they have many years of this license? Logan saying an Angels rookie name is Jansen Junk. <laughs> he's got to play better better than his last name. Maybe he's a junk ball pitcher though. Maybe that's his deal. How is it? Is it worth watching? It's uh. You know, the only reason why I watch it is because they were really, they were really pressing, pushing that show on uh, during the Super Bowl. NBC had the Super Bowl, so it's on Peacock, and they were really pushing it. And so me, me and some buddies were just like, uh, "What should we watch after this? We watch the Winter Olympics. Should we pop on an episode of that?" And we're like, "Yeah," and it's okay. I mean, they're basically doing the thing where where it's like, "All right, let's take this show." And here's a Jacob Grom short print. Let's take this comedy and turn it into a drama. So all the characters are are very drama y. -y. It's a little cheesy at times because they're, they're like, you know, forcing in references to the sitcom. This goes to Harry and the Mets. Nice short print, Harry. But uh, it's okay. But it's definitely a drama. You know, and they and obviously as a drama they definitely lean more heavily into some of the social issues that Fresh Prince just kind of, you know, touched on as as a sitcom -y kind of way, you know. Mike Trout flipped around? Troll. Come on. Pops made me think it was like an autograph or something. Some of these can be autographed. Right, so you're not going to see Carlton, I mean, not like, not in that sort of way. You know, but I mean, the, the, the overview of Fresh Prince of Bel-Air back in the day was, hey, here's, it's like a fish out of water story. Here's working class Will Smith going to rich Bel-Air high school. Hilarity ensues, right? Um... That was the sitcom, so same sort of deal, but Bel Air is now, now it's more serious. Um, I mean, it's probably worth watching the first episode. If you dig that, then you might be interested in the other two. I think they released three at once, and then I think every Thursday. I'm sure that I, I, don't, I don't think I'm going to be like, oh my god, Thursday night let's let's all get together and watch Bel Air. I don't think it's going to be like that. I'm, I think I'm probably going to be like, oh yeah, that's right. That show. I need something to watch. Let's watch a, a few episodes have piled up over the last month. Let's pop an episode on. But I think those reboot, I, I generally don't like those kind of rebooted sort of shows. Tampa Bay Pride, another Wander Franco, unless it's completely oppo like that. 
Like, I think they try to reboot... Did they reboot Friends, Sex in the City, Gilmore Girls? But they kind of rebooted them with the same... It was the same deal, right? It wasn't a very drastic change. Nice, that one's out of 75. There you go, Patrick. So, like, I don't know. Those shows, I feel like they kind of fall flat. You know, I guess they rebooted 90210 with a different cast, but that's also sort of the same thing. It wasn't really something super different. But this is like... Uh, this is like taking a very popular metal song, right? A popular heavy metal song, and someone's doing an acoustic version. It's, it's almost like the opposite. Or like an acoustic song turning to a heavy metal song, you know? So it's like that kind of change, which I think is interesting. Right, How I Met Your Mother got rebooted. So now it's How I Met Your Father, right? So it's like the same deal. It's like... You know, so those are usually just kind of, doesn't really feel like they're too challenging. There's a little bit more of a money grab for that sort of stuff, right? But Bel Air, they actually look like well, there was a fresh look on it. It's produced by, by, by Will Smith. It's kind of weird seeing not Will Smith. Uh, kind of weird seeing not Will Smith. Being his character's name is Will Smith. Uh, Justin, yes. That character was introduced. That 90s show looked dumb. It wasn't that 90s show or that 80s show, whatever it was. I think starred, uh, for the handful of episodes at last, starred Glenn Howerton of one of my favorite television programs, It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. That was one of his first early sitcom roles. Eighty show? Ninety show? I forget. But yeah, same deal there. It's just like you're just like, hey, let's it's that seventy show, but in the eighties. You know, <laughs> like In case you're wondering, Zach Short is five foot ten. Oh, that 90s show is coming out. So maybe Glenn Howerton was in uh, that 80s show, which did not work. And so now they're going like, oh, let's do, uh, let's do that 90s show. Oh, Kyle Lewis, nice. Kind of popped, well, surprised me a little bit. So that Kyle Lewis is in this uh, popular, famous even, late 80s wood design, the 1987 Topps baseball card autograph, Kyle Lewis. Those are usually on card. Danny, the Seattle Mariners. Nice, Danny. Justin wants a reboot of Kids Say the Darnest Things. I didn't they didn't they reboot that for a little bit? I did I did I did consume all the uh, all the Beatles stuff. The Get Back stuff was uh, pretty awesome. I enjoyed it quite a bit. I did see the IMAX version of the rooftop concert. Uh, last weekend, and I thought that was really good too. I wish they had. Ooh, autograph? Nice, Josiah Gray. One out of 25 autograph for Danny. Nice rookie auto. He was part of the trade that sent Max Scherzer and Trey Turner to, uh, to Los Angeles. And he was one of the Dodgers' kind of upper tier prospects, if not one of their top tier prospects at the time. Nice. Uh, but yeah, I did the uh, I did the IMAX show, which was pretty awesome. Next box coming up halfway through this break. We've got about another thirty-five minutes to go. 
I thought the IMAX concert was great because there's not too many times. Most people are watching these music documentaries of like the Beatles and they're watching them on their, their laptops or their tablets with this sort of crappy sound, right? So to see the Beatles in that scope and scale and with just that excellent IMAX sound, the big sound, it was like, that's the closest I'm gonna get to seeing the Beatles in concert, you know? There's Casey Mize for Detroit, Matthew. So yeah, you're not, not gonna see that in that context too often. So yeah, I did watch the IMAX version of it. But I think they only had it released, that Beatles Rootop concert was only released on IMAX for one weekend, I wanna say, just last weekend. So I wish they had extended that. They might, I mean, I don't know, but I wish they did. But it was a limited release. Yeah, Dad, I'm just gonna be full. That's what I feel like too. Has a new venue in Vegas open yet? I'm not aware of a new venue in the works. I'll tell you what though, Justin, the new uh, Top Golf, about 15 minutes north of us, is very close to being completed. There's Mike Yastrzemski, Carl's grandkid, going to the 714 out of 2022 for my rivals, the Giants, Dusty. And a Raphael Devers flipped around. It might be, might just be the blue, it's not number, but it might just be the blue parallel of this design. Looks like a sphere was supposed to, was under construction when I went in July, supposed to be for concerts. Wow, no, I've not heard of that. That sounds pretty cool. Where, what, what property was it near? What resort casino was it near? Yeah, Vegas is it's just kind of a it's kind of amazing. There's just construction happening all the time. Things being built and torn down all the time. Yeah, the sphere sounds like an acoustic challenge, right? Maybe the thing is just a sphere, but inside is a square. And the acoustics are, are, are right. Or maybe it's just a regular concert hall and there's a sphere on top of it, just as a eye catcher kind of thing. Or maybe you're just inside a big 360 sort of situation. 
like the uh, like what they use to film scenes in the Mandalorian and other Star Wars related shows which is apparently sort of a revolutionary sort of thing the M is the Madison Square Garden sphere huh it was Jazz Chisholm, Miami Pride. One fifty four out of two ninety nine for Miami. That'll be for Dusty. Where is it? Where is it located? I gotta check. I gotta go take a look at that. Got a Julio Urias relic for my Dodgers. Chris Parent. Thought randomized the Dodgers. Yeah, I'll have to look it up. Corbin Burns, there's Wander Franco, another one. Let's see if we can find some parallels of him or a short print, that'd be awesome. Patrick with the Rays. The autograph, there he is, on the 1987 design, Ronzi Contreras. That's for Pittsburgh, that's going to be for Chris. No, check that, Danny and the Pirates. 27 out of 199. There's Rod Carew, die cut, and Mookie Betts. Not far from Caesars. Huh, where'd they... Wait, is it the new Caesars venue? Didn't they redo their venue? Maybe they didn't, I don't know. No. All right, Silver Packs. crazy in the silver packs. Two more boxes to go. Not far from Caesars, across from a golf course. Speaking of golf, I think uh, Genesis, the Genesis Invitational is here this weekend in Los Angeles. Any predictions? Any predictions from you, Justin, or anybody? I think Nick and his brother are going on Sunday. I think they got Sunday tickets there. All right, here's another Casey Mize, Future Stars. Another one for the Tigers. That's going to go to Matthew. Now that the NFL's over, I feel like, I feel like we're kind of getting, getting into... Getting more and more into golf as we kind of get into as we kind of get into the getting closer to the Masters. All 
All right, Indian Wells next month too. So I'm trying to think what, what sort of, so we've got some golf tournaments here in February. I guess March Madness will be the next sort of big major sporting event coming up. I think the F1 season starts late March. In April will be the Masters. Hopefully we'll have opening day baseball as well sometime in April. I guess short term, that's kind of some of the bigger events coming up. Daytona, right, Sam Strayer. Daytona's coming up. This weekend? I, th I think this weekend, right? I forget about Daytona. Because I was watching some, uh, some Daytona stuff earlier today. Yeah, it's this Sunday, yeah. What was I watching on FS1 the other day, Sam? Was it some some qualifying, some heats? Something like that. Yeah, I gotta check out the... And some, some big names do appear, right, Curtis? In that Indian Wells tournament? I feel like they do. And I've never seen... I've never seen tennis live. Like pro tennis, live, tour tennis. Got Pete Alonzo flipped around. Oh, these are nice. I think these may fall one ish per case, or maybe one every other case. Home field advantage, Pete Alonzo. Very familiar to another company that does, does cards in this style, but I still love it. Mets, that goes to Harry in the Mets. Nice. Congrats. Yeah, all the big names go, yeah, I gotta, I gotta check that out. A NASCAR race, that's another thing that I have not done live. But I gotta check off the list. I think California is reconfiguring. Is California on the NASCAR schedule this year? Or is it next year? I know they, they've been redoing the track to make it a little bit smaller and then just kind of revamping the, redoing the seats and the, the grandstands and the luxury boxes and stuff. Maybe t bump into some WTA players that are shorter than me? Right, then I would have a chance. It's Greg Maddox. You watch the all gas, no brakes YouTube video on NASCAR. No shot you would ever go to that live. I hear it's fun. Um, Nick Jaspi has been to a few NASCAR races. And he says it's a good time. All right, there's Kyle Lewis numbered card. Nice. 279 out of 300. Which, uh, it's the, I think this is the advanced stats parallel. It's the exact same, except it's just... It's just numbered to 300. And the back, the, the copy is different. That goes to Danny in Seattle. I haven't seen golf live. I need to go. Oh, so California is on the schedule. Nice, Sam. Sam saying 27th. Oh, okay. That, that location is about, I guess, no traffic, about an hour or so east of, east of here, of uh, Hermosa Beach. We've 
Got the Buster Posey relic. San Francisco Pride. City flag patch. And that'll be for Dusty and the Giants. So the sphere will sit, uh, will host all, all sorts of events with the advanced audio and world's largest LED screen. A lot, ideal for electronic concerts, I see. For the EDM kids. I think golf sits lower than NASCAR in your, I hear the golf, I mean, I like the golf, I like watching. I need to watch tennis, I need to watch golf, I would love to see that live. NASCAR, F1. 57.99, Chris Bryant, postseason relic for Bryant Giant for Dusty. Mike Schmidt die cut. Hundred and sixty thousand square feet of LED. Jeez. Seems overwhelming. Alright, I've been thinking that. I will not, I will not. Uh don't lock that door, please. Um, thanks, Evan. Have a good night, man. I would love to see a cricket match, too. You saw camel racing while you were in the UAE? That sounds like fun. Did you did you bet on any camels? That's got, that's got to be a fun uh, fun activity. There's Zach Short. He's five ten. Rookie auto for the Tigers. That's for Matthew and Detroit. We got another Wander Franco to add to the pile for Patrick and Tampa Bay. All right, two silver packs in the final box coming up. Standard silver packs, nice looking cards, Mojo Refractor, last box. Camel race is interesting, no, no betting, as I had no idea what was going on. Craig was fun though. It was just a short T20 matches. That's right, yeah, F1 to start at the end of March, March 20th, Bahrain. Me and a buddy of mine tried to price out a, a World Cup of association soccer, Curtis, but uh, I think it's going to be really expensive. We, we, I mean, obviously, it's very too late in the planning stages. Trevor Rogers, Miami. That'll be for Dusty. So is the camel racing on a – how do they do that? Is it on a, on a, tra on a track? Are they like – do they do mile? Half mile, quarter mile kind of runs, just straightaways. How does that work? I'm sure there's like someone in the Middle East who has a super popular podcast handicapping camel racing. Okay. Correct. The, the North America World Cup, the, yeah, it'll be easy to, pretty easy to get a 
uh, get into a World Cup match. I mean, maybe, maybe even do a quick little travel to maybe a couple venues here and there. It was a huge multi-mile track. Yeah, that, that's right, Jason Jaspi. Camel racing would definitely be on the Ocho. It was two and a half miles, but they could definitely get those around. Justin's watched dwarves run a relay against, against a camel. I don't think I've seen a camel outside of a zoo. But I'm intrigued. All right. Good luck, everybody. Final box, almost there. Stay on target. Almost there. Almost there. Oh, Wander Franco, then Christian Yelich. And then we've got a Gerardo Parra, uh, 36 out of 4.99. Nice, that's that green bubbles pattern, whatever they call this. Uh-oh, Sam. Keep it clean. Keep it safe. I don't know what's I don't know, I don't know what's about to happen here. The same way they get a horse to run, I would I would guess. Another Wander Franco for Patrick. A robot? I don't know. I, I don't understand that. I'll take your word for it. I wonder what the what the regulatory body is that that regulates camel racing, or is this just an underground thing? Another Wander Franco, are there age restrictions? Well, that sounds awful, Sam. There's a tiny little a robot that gets him to move now is what Curtis is saying. Maybe it is, maybe it has evolved from the brick situation. There's Ryan Zimmerman, 1200 out of 2022. That's for Danny in Washington. Dallas Garcia for the Rangers, Arlington Pride, City Flag Patch. They have Camel Fashion Shows, and this year Camel got disqualified for using Botox. Dang, it's competitive. Joe, do they not have Renaissance Fairs out in California? They used to ride elephants and camels at the one in North Carolina. Yeah, there has to be. There has to be. There has to be multiple Renaissance fairs. But I have never been to one of those. Been to a count camp in the county fairs. Saw saw Hall and Oates. 
the Orange County Fair a few years back. There's Aroldis Chapman, the Yankees. That'll be for Patrick and the Yankees. Now I can go to a Renaissance Fair without having to uh, dress the part, right? Like I can, as a civilian, I can just go there in, in street clothes. Yeah, I'm into the giant turkey leg. They'll have those, those are pretty common at, this, at the county fairs. Could watch a joust. That'd be nice. Yeah, turkey leg, a pint, and some jousting. I think California, or at least Los Angeles County, has uh, sort of opened the opened the door for uh, maskless outdoor events. So. Hopefully they'll start bringing stuff like that back and make it a lot easier to run. I think they still have been running it. It's just a little bit easier without, as restrictions get lifted, eased a little bit. So we're on the right track, finally. And our autograph is Don Mattingly. Cut those sideburns, Don Mattingly. That'll go to Patrick Davis and the Yankees. Was this the actual picture of his 1987 card? Did he have an 87 card? And Eddie Murray die cut. Got a Yachty back there. Almost done. Let's see what we got in our silver packs. Gotcha. You can wear street clothes in the one by you, says Justin, in this Renaissance Fair. And then, But if you dress the part, you can get a free entry. Detmers, Larkin, Jackson Core, Bo Jackson, Cole, Machado, Jesse Winker, and Kevin Gossman. All right, nothing too crazy there. There you go. Do I have any more? All right. Just like we were doing last night, we'll also, we have some leftover. We'll do uh, give away some of these event-exclusive Rip Party packs. Um, we'll do that, randomizer, and then we will do a quick little recap. So everyone's got a chance at it. Let's gather everybody's names. Let's put them all in here. And I'm let's like roll it and randomize it. Two and a two, four times. Hard four, top two after four gets packs. One, one pack each. Two, three, and four. You know what? I usually use the original 10 names on here, but odds wise the math works out the same. Um, two and a two. So top two is going to be Dusty and Curtis with a K. There you go. Thanks to both of you for getting in. We'll get you one pack each. And if you choose to rip it, let, let us know if you get anything cool. Here's a quick recap. 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 That was a nice... Uh, Home field advantage card. I got to snap a picture of that. The city packs look cool. There's Kyle Lewis for the Mariners. We got a couple of Wander Relics, which were pretty nice. That was a Jacob deGrom short print. There's the other one right there. And there you go. And some other numbered cards that will sleep and top load for you. Thanks, everybody, for watching. I'm Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com. And I will see you next time for the next break. Bye-bye.